Good evening, guys. Hello, good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? Hi. Everything Normal. good? Okay. How was your weekend? How was your weekend, guys? Very tired. Very tired. Yeah, I, I feel you. And how was your day today? Uh, did you work today? Did you all work today, guys? Okay, uh, ¿cuántos han hecho el examen? How many of you have done the exam? Me? I finished. And what was your, your score? How much did you get? 10? Yeah. Of course. Pretty nice. <laughs> That's good. And what about the others? How much uh, did you get in your exam? 100. 100, ah! very nice. And what about you, Juan Pleites? How much did you get? El exam final? Yeah, the, no, the mixer, the, the first one. Yes, yes. Uh, you already done that, uh, the meter, the, the first one. How was, uh, how much was, was your score? 180%. Very nice. Okay, good. Uh, okay, let's see, it's 9 p.m. So we are going to start today and we are going to start in, in where we left last Thursday, okay? So let's go to the PPT. Uh, last Thursday we were studying about, uh, what's, what's the last topic that we studied last Thursday? Do you remember about last topic? Nobody. Uh, what was the last topic? Do you remember? What did we study? Okay, we were studying uh, likes and dislike. That was uh, our last topic from last uh, weekend, from last week. So this day, Monday, July 26, we are going to study the use of will and can. Uh, but first of all, uh, we're going to review, to recall in previous knowledge about just no question. Uh, we have already studied that, but we are going to review so you don't forget about the rules and about the practice. So we, we have to practice to practice every day, so let's do that. Just no question and WH question. Just a, a little bit so you can remember about that. Um, let me see, Rodrigo Antonio, could you please read uh, the theory that is in here? Yes, no question, WH question. Yes, no question. This question uh, starts with a, an auxiliary verb or the verb to be in the present or past simple. They are called yes, no question because in general terms, they can be answered with a simple yes or no. Sigo. 
Okay, stop. That is okay. That's okay, Rodrigo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's see some examples. Okay, let me do something. Okay, continue. Uh, we use the auxiliary to be, the verb to be, uh, to make the yes, no question. As you can see, there is the formula. We use an auxiliary verb. This can be did in the past, or it can be do, or it can be the verb to be. Um, is, are, in case that is a, a singular noun or a plural noun. So we make that with the auxiliary verb plus the subject. In this case, it can be you, uh, me, she, or she, they, or we. Then the main verb. This is the main verb. In, this, in the first uh, example, go is the, the main verb. And then we have a complement to the party last night. And don't forget the question mark. That is very important. So to make questions. So we have two examples. The first one is, did you go to the party last night? And the answer is, yes, I did. Or you can say, no, I didn't. If the answer is negative. And with the other one, the second one, we use the verb to be. Are you ready to go? No, not yet. So that is very simple to make a uh, yes, no question. Just remember to use the verb to be, the auxiliary, then the subject, the main verb, and the complement, plus the question mark. And that will be uh, very easy for you. So as this is a review, we are going to go uh, faster. Then we have WH question. WH question. So I need another another volunteer to read the, let's see the, the concept, the theory. Me, teacher, I don't. Me? Me. Okay, who says me first? I guess Manuel, was Manuel. Yeah. Manuel was the first. Okay, uh, can you please read the theory? Yes, no questions. WS questions. WS questions. These questions start with a WS question word. Example. For example, what? where, when, etc. And as an exception, how? This type of questions is also called open answer question because their answers require something different from yes or no. Take a look at the following examples. Okay, thank you, Manuel. Well, in the WH questions, uh, we don't answer with a simple yes or not. We need more information. For example, in these um, in these questions, uh, where were you when I call you? Where were you when I call you? And the answer is is I mean, I was at the cinema. It's an specific answer. It's not uh, only one yes or not. And the second one, how did you get home last night? A friend gave me a lift or a ride. We have to be very detailed with the answer. We, we can say only yes or not. And the typical structure for these questions is the following. We have the question word with WH can be where, uh, what, all these options. What, which, where, when, etc. And sometimes how how and then we we need the auxiliary verb either did or do or where in the past 
as well, we need a subject, the main verb, the complement, and the question mark. So that will be all for, for the structure. It will be um, the rule that you have to follow when you make a WH question. So as we have already started this, we are going to continue with, um, I have a video on the platform and we are going to check how do you stress, uh, how do you use your voice when you make a question? We are going to see. So uh, let's see the video. Let's watch the video. Okay, listen and pay attention to the to the explanation. The rising and falling intonation is important. Okay, let's go to from the beginning. I don't know what is what is going on. Let me try. I'm going to refresh the video. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, let me wait a minute, please. Okay, this is not the video. This is the current video. Okay, let's listen. In this lesson, participants would listen, notice, and use intonation in questions. Pronunciation. Intonation in Questions Part A. Listen and Practice Yes-No questions usually have rising intonation. WH questions usually have falling intonation. Do you like pop music? What kind of music do you like? Okay, so now that you have listened and paid attention, what I want you to do is to record your voice asking these questions. Try to do your best. Remember, rising and falling intonation is important. Could you hear the, the rule, guys? The correct intonation that we have to do? Yeah. Yes. Like this. Yeah. Do you pop music? We are up. We go up with our, our voice. And uh, that is when we use uh, auxiliary do. Do you like pop music? And then when we use a WH question, for example, what? What kind of music do you like? This go down the, the, the question at the end. Uh, our voice go down in this case. When we use the auxiliary do, the stress is a little bit higher at the end of the question. Do you like pop music? And in WH question at the end goes down. Uh, what kind of music do you like? So let's practice some of these examples. Remember, do we go up at the end? We stress uh, our voice at the end of the question. And with WH questions, uh, we stress down the, the intonation. So let's practice. Who wants to read the, the first one? To, to, to read the... I teach. Okay, with the correct intonation. 
Do you like to watch TV? Do you like Do to you watch like to Do you like to watch Do you like to watch to TV? Do you like music? Do you play a musical instrument? What program do you like? What videos do you do like? Do you like? Pardon. Which musical instrument do you play? Okay, thank you. Um, remember, the stress is the sound that we make at the end of the question. For example, do you like watch TV? Listen to the question mark. Do you like to watch TV? And do you like music? Which sounds a little bit higher at the end of the question. When we use the auxiliary do. Do you like play a musical instrument? We sound a little bit uh, louder at the end. Don't do that uh, like, you are, like you are bored. Don't do that like that, like this. Uh, do you play a musical instrument? No, uh, use a little, a little bit higher your voice at the end. Do you play a musical instrument? Yes, I do, or no, I don't. Okay, uh, is, it, is that clear, guys? Or do you need, uh, I need another, another volunteer. Me? So, Me okay, go ahead, please. Do you like to watch TV? Do you like music? Do you play a musical instrument? What program do you like? What nice. video do you play? Which musical instrument do you play? Okay, very nice. Which musical instrument do you play? That's good. So remember to use a different intonation when you are making a question. Like in Spanish, uh, use the question mark. So we have to use that correctly. Because English is about uh, intonation. If you uh, listen to a native speaker, uh, the first time it will be very hard to understand because they speak very fast and they use a different um, accent. So if you can practice that, you will sound more natural when uh, when speaking or when, ans uh, when asking questions. So if you have the time to practice and listen to the video one, one more time, so you can do that. Okay, thank you. Let's see the next um, page. We have a, another purpose in here. Let me see, uh, I will ask to, to Rodrigo, Rodrigo Daniel, can you please read the, the purpose, the objective please? Hello, Rodrigo. Okay. It's, uh, in this lesson, participants will listen to a TV show where they have to pay attention to the titles about the contestant, co contestants. Contestants. Okay. In this, uh, in this lesson, uh, you will listen to a TV show where they have to pay attention. You have to pay attention to the details about the contestants. What is a contestant? Do you know what is that? Concursante. Yeah, it's like a participant in a TV show, in a TV program. So let's um, go. And what are the instructions? Uh, let me see. Somebody that somebody that hasn't participated always. Uh, let me ask 
Sulma Beatriz, are you here? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. What is what are the instructions for this uh, activity? Uh, read. Yes, read, please. Uh, listen to four people uh, on TV game show. Three men want to invite invite Linda or on date. What kind of thing do you they like? What kind of the thing doesn't Linda like? Choose the correct answer for each participant. Okay, thank you. So what we are going to do is uh, listen to the audio and then we are going to answer. There are three men that wants to, to invite Linda on a date. So you have to pay attention. What kind of things do they like? What do they like and what kind of things does Lisa like? And the instruction is, is simple. You just have to pay attention and answer these those questions. So let's let's play the the audio and listen careful carefully. Listen to four people on a TV game show. Three men want to invite Linda on a date. What kinds of things do they like? What kinds of things does Linda like? Welcome to Who's My Date? Today, Linda is going to meet Bill, John, and Tony. So, let's start with the first question on music. Bill, what kind of music do you like? Oh, classical music. Cla what kind of music does Bill like? Classical. Classical music. Classical, classical music. Classical. classical. Let's continue. Classical, okay. And how about you, John? Well, I like jazz. And you, Tony? My favorite music is rock. How about you, Linda? Well, I like pop music. I don't like jazz or classical music very much. Okay, now let's talk about movies. Bill, what kind of movies do you like? I like thrillers. And how about you, John? What kind of uh, movies does Bill like? Trailers. Like trailers. 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 And do you know about that? About that kind of movie? What is uh, thrillers? What are thrillers? Honestly, I don't know about that kind of movie. So I will look for that. And I'm going it's to tell lying. you what is thriller. No, so I'm going to look for that. Okay, let's continue. Oh, I like westerns. Westerns are good. And how about you, Tony? I love horror films. And what about you, Linda? I really like horror films, too. And now for question number three. Bill, what kind of TV programs do you like? Well, I like to watch news programs. John? Uh, well, you know, I really like talk shows. And... What kind of TV program does Bill like? News program. News program. News program. Okay, good. And let's continue. Thriller is suspense. And Tony. Our trailer is suspense. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. How about you? And let's pause. Do you remember what kind of music does John like? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. 
as you have done the exercise, you already know the answers. And what kind of movies does John like? Western. Western movies. Western. West, Western. And what kind of TV programs does John like? Talk, Talk shows. Talk shows. Talk shows. Yeah. Here's a word missing in the in the word program. Yeah. What word is missing? A. The A. A. This A is not here because this is Spanish. Yeah. Almost. Is programs M S at the end, not A. This A go after the G. And what kind of what kind of music does Tony like? Rock music. Rock. Rock music. Rock. Rock music. What kind of movie uh, does Tony like? Horror films. Horror films. Horror films. Okay. What kind okay. of TV programs does Tony like? Game shows. Game shows. Game shows. Game shows. And what kind of music does Linda like? Pop. 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 Sounds like jazz. Pop. What kind of movies uh, does Cinda like? Horror, Horror films. films. Horror films. Horror films. Horror films as well. And what kind of TV program does Linda like? Talk like shows, talk and, shows game and game shows. Talk shows and game shows. Let's see. Okay, very nice. Very good. So you have already completed this part. And let's move on to the other one. Uh, please, let me see. Are you here, uh, Jose Mendoza? Yeah. yeah. Are you here? Can you please help me reading the purpose, the objective? In this lesson, participant Listen the conversation where will for invitation only when when making plans when making plans you can see no not a lot. okay no problem okay thank you so in this okay. lesson, you will listen to a conversation where the auxiliary or the modal rule for invitation is used when making plans. Okay. So in here, uh, we basically are uh, realized that we use wool for invitation or to make plans. Okay, let's... Me gustaría. Yeah. Me gustaría. Wool is a model that modifies the bear, the main bear. When we use wool, uh, we wool. add a, another meaning to the bear. Cuando usamos uh, el auxiliar wool, le cambiamos el significado al verbo, al, al, la base, al verbo base. So, cuando usamos wool, Básicamente estamos diciendo ia al final del verbo. Por ejemplo. Pero Wool es el, el futuro y, y, infinito, futuro indefinido, algo así, ¿va? No. Uh, no, Wool es un modal. Es un auxiliary. Los auxiliares modifican al verbo. Sí, sí, sí como, como Will. Uh, no, will is used for the future. Uh, we, we use will for making plans or to make requests and also to offers. Para hacer planes, para 
pedir algo y para hacer ofertas. Ya vamos a explicar un poco más, más detenido. Pero básicamente, would modifica al verbo. Si nosotros decimos, uh, would you like, usamos el auxiliar would en like. Like uh, significa sí, sí. usar. Sería, 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 ah, Ajá. no, usaría, sería entonces. Te gustaría. Ajá. Te gustaría. Básicamente, en español, uh, le agregamos ia al final del verbo. Pero en inglés, usamos would. Y the base verb, el verbo base. Ahorita lo vamos Okay. a explicar. Right now we are going to check that. Okay, let's uh, listen to the video. In this lesson, participants would listen to a conversation where would for invitations is used when making plans. We will learn through this conversation how to accept or refuse an invitation. As you listen to the audio program, pay attention to expressions such as I'd like to and I'd love to. Okay, listen, um, I would like you to read this before the, the original audio. So I need two participants. Me, teacher. Two participants, okay. And the... Um, David. Dave? Dave. Okay. Who will be Dave? Oscar. Yo puedo ser Dave si quieres. Okay, let's listen to um listen to Oscar and then you will participate Okay. Melon thing. Okay, no problem. Okay, go ahead guys, please. I had ticket to the soccer mat on Friday night. Why would you like to go? Thanks, I'd love to. What time do, does it start? At eight, eight o'clock. That sounds great. So do you want to have dinner at six? Who it it like to buy it? I have to work the work late. Oh, that's okay. Let you meet at the stadium before the match around seven thirty. Okay, let me at the gate. That sounds fine. See you there. See you See there. you. See you there. See you there. Okay, thank you guys. Do you have any question about the pronunciation or about the the meaning of, of the words? How do you pronounce this? Well, this is our topic for today. Wool. 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 And the the complete question is would you like to go would you like to go would you like to go like would you like would you to like go to go and then thanks this is the constructive uh, form of wool this d over here means wool as well but it's constructive and then the pronunciation is i I love to. I love I to. love to. I love Sí, sería to. ahí la, sí, ahí la traducción sería yo lo yo amaría eso. No sería. La, yes, me encantaría. Me encantaría. Ah. Oh, as you want to to translate that, I will love means uh as well um, lo amaría, but. It sounds better if you say, me encantaría. I would love to. Then what time does it, does it start? At eight. That sounds great. So do you want to have dinner at six? Oh, I like to. I like to. But I have to work late. 
oh, that's okay. Let's just meet at the stadium before the match at around 7.30. Okay, let's meet at the gate. What is a gate? Puerta. Puerta. Uh, repeat again. The, yeah, like the door. And that sounds fine. See you, see you there. And now uh, let's listen to the original audio. An invitation. Let's meet the game. Let's meet at the gate. At the gate. Okay. Let is like mm -hmm. say, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Like vamos. Uh, and meet is when you meet someone. It's like a meeting. Like this, this meeting, the video conference is a meeting. Let's meet. Like let's get get together. Le, let's get together. Reunámonos. That is uh, okay. mid. It's okay. Great. Listen yeah. to the to the audio, That's please. It. Okay, you're welcome. I have tickets to the soccer match on Friday night. I have tick. I have tickets to the soccer match on Friday night. Would you like to go? Thanks. I'd love to. What time does it start? At eight o'clock. That sounds great. So, do you want to have dinner at six? Uh, I'd like to, but I have to work late. Oh, that's okay. Let's just meet at the stadium before the match around 7.30. Okay, let's meet at the gate. That sounds fine. See you there. Okay, as you go here, we use wool to make offers. Para hacer ofertas to offer something to somebody else. So what is he offering, offering to her? Go to the stadium. He's offering going to the stadium to watch a match. So I have here some more information. The use of who and can. In the video, uh, we did a, a review about can, but, but in this uh, presentation, we are going to review a little bit about the auxiliary can as well, because both who and can are used to make offers and to invite people. Uh, for example, we use the modal verb who and can to offer to do things for people or to invite them to do something. We also use them to make requests or ask permission to do something. And here, this is incorrect. There are some type of auxiliary verbs we use for, uh, we use with other verbs to add more meaning to the verb. Uh, lo que les estaba diciendo aquí, que usamos, there are some, some types, types in plural. There are some type of auxiliaries. Of auxiliary verbs that we use with other verbs to add more meaning to the verb. Lo que les estaba diciendo, que el will lo usamos para agregarle más significado a los verbos. Por ejemplo, if I say, uh, will you play basketball? Will you play? Ya no significa solo jugar, sino que jugarías basketball. Le agregamos el ia in Spanish. Or we can say, uh, Will you watch uh, that TV show? Will you watch Verías, that TV show? Ahí estamos modificando el verbo. No es solo 
a la forma base del verbo, sino que ya le agregamos más significado. So let's see some examples. Okay, let's, let's see. We use wool plus like. Will you, I mean, we use wool plus like, uh, like a lot of, a lot for offers. Uh, it's very useful for different situations. For example, I, as I was telling you, we use wool to, to ask for uh, offers, to make an offer, to request, and to invite people to do something. For example, in these sentences, would you like to come to our house for dinner? Would you like to come to our house for dinner? Then we have, would you like some cake? Would you like to celebrate uh, Chinese New Year with us? Would you, we also use would and then the subject. Uh, pay attention to this. We can say, would she likes to come to, to our house for dinner? Uh, because we made the offer direct to the other person. Uh, we can assume that somebody else will like. If we use will, si usamos will, tenemos que hacer la oferta directamente a la persona que tenemos enfrente. No podemos decir, will she? ¿Le gustaría a ella venir a la casa? No, porque si le pregunto a usted, no le puedo preguntar algo por ella. Tiene que ser directamente. It has to be directly, directly to the other person. So if you have any questions so far, you can tell me and I will try to answer it. I have a question. Uh, all this time, uh, do, do I have to use good plus like? Okay, good question. Uh, and the answer is not, we can use another verb. We can use another verb, not only like, because like is uh, just the, the main example. Let's do some, some other examples. So we're going to delete this and we are going to create another offer. For example, I have this one. Would you go with me to the to the cinema? Would you go? We don't say only would you like. We can use another verb. Would you go with me to the cinema? And the answer yes. is can be, yes, I will. Or no, I wouldn't. That is the negative form. To refuse <laughs> a request. Yes, okay. I will. Or no, I wouldn't. Or simple, we can say, no, I will not. I will not. So is, is clear now that now that, that you know that we can use another verb with will? Yes. Remember that we use that to offers, to make offers yeah. and also to, okay. to invite people. Okay. Um, other example can be, would you cook a cake with me? 
Yes, that's another example. Will you cook a cake with me? And it, it can be yes or it can be no. Will you? Okay. It's a remember, that is an offer. Es una oferta o un, una invitación. Okay. Okay, another example. Who has another example? Using another verb. It can be play, will you play uh, video games with me? Will you, uh, will you sing this song with me? With you. With you swim with me. Do you play in basketball? In Will you swim? With me. And the other was, would you play basketball? Yes. Would you play basketball? Okay, as you can see, we can use another verb, not only like, because it doesn't matter what, what is the offer, as long as you, as you use wool. Okay, uh, I, I saw other examples in internet and the most of the examples that I saw uh, use good like, good like, or good love, something, something like that. Mm -hmm. Entonces pensé que era como una regla. Entonces. No, uh, that is common that we learn uh, the rule with those verbs, with like or love. But as you can see, we can use another verb because we teacher, are a question. making offers. Okay, go ahead. Yes, thanks, teacher. A question. Tell me. What is your question? Uh, the, you are in, in mute. Now you can speak. Eh, me refiero a la respuesta de la pregunta, de la invitación, no dicho. Ah, ¿cómo sería la forma correcta para la respuesta? Exacto. Ah, uh, if it is a positive answer, you you say yes, I will. Yes, I will. And if it is negative. Negative, you say, no, I wouldn't. Me, si me gustaría o no, no me gustaría. Or if you okay. want to, to add more details, would you go with me to the cinema? Yes, I will go with you to the cinema. Or no, I wouldn't go with you to the cinema. Longer. Okay, thank you. Yes, basically we also use yes I will for the answer or no I will not for negative answers. Like a yes no question. Yeah, like a yes no question. We we follow the the, the structure. Will we use will in the answer as well. Okay, if you don't have questions. Uh, we can move on to the next slide. Next slide. No question. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, I guess this is for Ken. I forget to 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 write a title. But in here we 
say that for more informal invitations, you can use the auxiliary can or the modal can plus get and get means buy in this context. In this context, we are using the, the verb get. Uh, we use can to, is the same meaning of will, but in this case, can is informal, is more informal. Like when you feel more confident when, with the other person. So will es más formal. Usamos will para cuando hacemos un reporte o algo, algo más formal. Y can, cuando estamos hablando con algún familiar, un amigo de confianza, podemos decirle can. In this case, can I get you a drink? Can I get you a drink? Uh, como dice aquí el, uh, el concepto, get means buy. Tiene el mismo significado de buy. Can I get you a drink? Or can I get you a ice cream? An ice cream. That is the same meaning. He is offering uh, somebody a drink. Can I get you a drink? And we also use wool and can for offering to help some someone. Would you like some help? Aquí le está ofreciendo ayuda. Can I help you? This is more informal. Can I help you? Like when you are asking your brother, can I help you with the with, with your bike? Can I give you a hand with that? Can I give you a hand with that? Means also help, help somebody else. So, do you have any question with the auxiliary can? What will be the main difference with can and will? The formality. The formality, yes. Uh, can is more informal. Is more that we when you feel more confident with the other person, and also uh, we can make some more example with can. We can say, "Can I offer a coffee? Can I offer you a coffee?" And we use can. Another example for can, for the auxiliary can. Teacher, uh, podría ser, uh, would, would you like to, perdón, would you help like to me sweep? It would be, repeat again, please. Can, per, Perdón, es can you help like to me sweep? Can, can you, you help like... me? Uh -huh. Can sweep? you help me to sweep? Sweep. How do you spell that? No sé, barrer. Busqué el verbo ah, barrer. I get this. Er, sweep. Es el or... Doble y P. Sweep. I guess uh -huh. that is that is the the verb. Can you help me sweep? Sweep. Yes, that is you are asking for help. Aquí ya no estás ofreciendo la ayuda, sino que estás pidiendo. Can you help me? Yeah. Or you can say can I help you? Sweep. Okay. But it's okay. Uh, we can use to make request. In this case, in this case, it's a request. Estamos pidiendo algo. Another example. 
Another example, you seen the auxiliary or the model can and me. wool. Um, can you help me with my math? No, can you help me do my math homework? Can I help you with your math homework? Can you help me with my math homework or can I help you? Can I help you with your math homework? With your math homework. Homework, uh, we can use the, the constructed form. The uh, uh, I will say the I don't know in this, how do you call this in Spanish the abbreviation abbreviation I don't know how to pronounce that but the short uh, form homework you can only write H W another example or if, are they enough? Can Is... I take them? Take... Repeat again, please. Can I take care of, of with you? Can I take care of with you? Can I take care of you? With you. Mm -hmm. Can I take care of you? That is another, another offer when somebody is sick that you can take care of someone. That is another good example because when somebody is sick, you can offer them to take care of them. Cuidarlos, right? Okay, uh, it's almost 9 p.m. If you don't have more examples or questions, uh, we are about to finish the class. Do you want to add another example? I, I hate you with the kids. Can I help you with the kids? Can I help you with the kids? Mm -hmm. uh, with... Can I help you with the kids? Okay, nice. Or can I help you with the children? Look at these children. Children in this case is plural. Children. We don't say children's. We don't add the S. Because children is an irregular noun. Children means one, uh, more than one uh, boy or girl. Another example, or let's go to to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's finish the class. Question. Do you have a question? Okay. No. no. Who has a question? Nobody. I have, I have one. Okay, which one? Me. The Tell me your question. That was the sentence that we made. Can you which can sentence? you can can you give me an uh, another example with wool? Uh using wool. Um let me see. Would you 
Would you do this for me? Would you do this for me? Or can you do this for me? That is another example. He's asking to do something for him. Or would you... Okay. Would you carry this for me? Do you know the uh, meaning of carry? Yes. yes. And this one, I have a, a last one. When you propose your girlfriend, would, would you marry me? When you propose your girlfriend, can you see the the sentence is very small? Would you marry me? When you propose to your girlfriend and give her the ring, that is another use for would is very common. Would you marry me? Or would you like to be my girlfriend? Things like that, you are asking to the other person. Okay. Okay, if I you can don't have use another pronoun different another... than you. Um, no, because you are asking the, directly to the other person, the, the person that is in front of you. You can say, would she marry? Would she like to marry me? And that is, uh, it doesn't make sense. Como que no tiene sentido decir, uh, le gustaría a ella casarse conmigo porque le está preguntando a él acerca de algo que haría la otra persona. Cuando estamos en Google, tenemos okay. que hacerle la pregunta directamente a, a la segunda persona. In this case, you. Or we can say, would, would they uh, like to go with us? ¿Les gustaría a ellos ir con nosotros? No, it, it doesn't sound good. No, es, no suena muy bien, no, no tendría mucho significado. So that's why we also use would, would you. Okay, thank you. And the chat says we can use other pronouns with the model verbs. Teacher. That was your question, right? Okay, tell me the last yeah. question. Yo pregunto si sería correcto decir, do you think that she will? Y blah, blah, blah. Lo demás. Oh, o sea, ¿tú yes. ¿Tú piensas que a ella le gustaría? Sí, en ese caso sí, porque le está preguntando a la otra persona, ¿verdad? Do you think? Do you think is another uh, question. Do you think she would like to go with me? He's asking for an opinion. What do you think? But then we, we use will. Do you think she would like to go with me? Uh, pero está bien porque le está preguntando la opinión a esta persona si a la otra persona le gustaría hacer algo en ese caso sí uh, ok if you don't have any questions so uh, see you tomorrow and if you mm -hmm. haven't done your exam please do that because as you, you can see, as you can see, uh, there is a, well, it's a requisito que finalicen todas las actividades en la plataforma para poder obtener el diploma. Si no lo han hecho el examen, eh, mañana me pueden enviar la, la captura. Porque a esta altura ya tendríamos que ir en la parte que estamos, 
este, en la parte 4. Pero ya todos tendríamos que haber finalizado todas las actividades, haber hecho el examen para que estemos al día y para que en las clases solo vengamos a aclarar alguna duda o a nada más a repasar lo que ustedes ya vieron en la plataforma. Si ustedes tienen alguna duda, la podemos aclarar acá, en la, perdón, en la videollamada y también en el chat. Así que nada más eso. Have a good night. See you tomorrow and take care, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, guys.